Hey, joining us now, we have one of my favorite all-time teammates. He was lucky enough to be in the NFL for a billion seasons. <laughs> one of the best receivers of all time from the University of Pittsburgh, Arizona Cardinals. Just got inducted in the Arizona Hall of Fame, soon to be the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Larry Fitzgerald, thanks for joining us, brother. Man, it's an honor to be on. And, uh, you know, you guys are two of my favorite teammates. Q, uh, you know, I, I love you, even though you went to Boy Lover U. Um, you could, didn't, <laughs> didn't have the grades to get in the pit. You know, Moon Township, easy drive to the University of Pittsburgh campus in Oakland. But, man, you chose to make the long journey. It worked out well for you, though. It worked out well for you. It worked out okay, man. Everybody keeps coming at me with that, uh, that interesting university that I went to. But, hey, man, thanks for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about – we got a big game coming up this week. We got the Arizona Cardinals, Seattle Seahawks. I learned so much being your teammate, watching you work every week. Did you approach this rivalry any different? I know it's the biggest game. You always circle those two games every year, right? You you look forward to that Seattle game. Did you approach this week any differently? I mean, you know, you always had to approach it with a high level of detail. Um, you know, because when we were playing, they were always playing against, you know, you know arguably the best defense, you know, in the league, you know, when they were, you know, the Legion of Boom, they had Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas and Cliff Averill and Michael Bennett and Bobby Wagner and KJ. I mean, they, they were just, they were so deep. Um, they weren't, they weren't like sophisticated in the schemes they ran. They just ran their scheme really, really well. Um, they always had answers for things and highly competitive. And so any mistake that you made, they would, they would, uh, you know, they would exploit it. And so you knew you didn't have a lot of margin for error. And, and when you played against them, you know, you had to be playing at your best if you had a chance to win. Are you surprised at all right now with the success that they're having up there in Seattle still? No, not really. I mean, Pete Carroll is, you know, a Hall of Fame talent coach. I mean, he's done an unbelievable job of, of putting together a group of guys who, who you know, are playing for them, playing for each other. Um, there was a lot of headlines were made this offseason when they when they moved on from uh, from Russell Wilson and, you know, gave the reins to Geno Smith. And, you know, you can kind of see the confidence in him growing every single week. You know, this is the first opportunity he's had since he played with the Jets as a first round pick. Somebody that actually believes in him. They want him in the building. They 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 put everything on his shoulders and given him the ability to to go out and play free. Um, you know he's leading the league right now in passion efficiency, throwing it over seventy percent. So he's playing with a lot of confidence. And over the last four weeks, they've led the the National Football League in rushing. Um, and so they've gotten back to a firm commitment of running the football, being a dominant up front team that's gonna you know grind out wins and they can beat you over the top with two prolific receivers and and, and lock it in in DJ Metcalf. So. The way they played football is kind of a brand of what they used to play back in the day and gotten away from it. And now they, they're doing it again. And guys are playing with a lot of confidence. Hey, let's pivot. Yesterday was the trade deadline. Do you think it's good for the for the brand of the NFL to start seeing teams be more aggressive at the deadline? It, uh, you, you saw all the people, right? Like you saw a ton of moves of contenders going and getting another piece to try and bolster. You haven't seen that in years past, but now you're starting to see a little bit more of that. You think it's good? Yeah, I mean, we've seen the most trades in NFL history um, over the last few few days. And, you know, I, I love it. I love it. The teams are trying to make moves to, to get better. I mean, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, they're top five in sacks right now in, in the game. Um, you know, you you could look at their whole team and you say, look, their, their defensive front probably is the best of the business. But they felt like they wanted to get even deeper. They can go out and get Robert Quinn, who's a hundred sack guy, who's been, you know, assaulting quarterbacks for many years to, to add another component to the to the uh, to the team and uh, so it just shows you a lot about you know teams who really believe that they have the ability to to take it to the next level and, and play deep into the playoffs and I love teams who, who are aggressive in that manner and then you look at the flip side and you look at Carolina you look at you know you say there it's a fire sale there but I mean they're one game out of the lead in their division um are they, they should have won the game last week if, if DJ Moore keeps his helmet on and they, they they make the extra point they win that game they're leading division and, you know, they're in a position, you know, that they can control their own destiny. And you look at them and you say, look, they're, you know, they're, they're playing for the future. You know, so you, you just never know. But I, I love the action. I think it, you know, it adds a lot of suspense to the stretch run of the season. Do you think nowadays, though, I mean, again, when we were at our best in Arizona, there was so much team chemistry and you were huge on that, right? Does that affect chemistry by trying to insert some of these superstar guys? Because some of them might work out, some of them might not work out, but... I remember even when I first got here, right, you would have a team party and bring everybody together. Does chemistry matter nowadays or is everybody just saying, hey, we got to go out and win football games? Oh, absolutely. You, you look at the, the good teams. I mean, you, you can't tell me that, you know, 
Christian McCaffrey going to a, to a team who played in the NFC Championship game who is, you know, a, a perennial contender over the last few years is going to hurt their team chemistry. You know, a guy with that type of character, that type of resume is only going to enhance the team chemistry, make that team better, um, you know, because, you know, it's all about the player. You know, Robert Quinn has, has been a guy who's he's, he's moved around from different teams but he's always been a guy that that's been respected in the locker room. So he's going to add to those teams. I mean, so it, it really just depends on the kind of character and the quality, but when you draft, when you trade for somebody, you know, in that position, you look at the Ravens bringing in Roy Quinn Smith, Roy, Roy Quinn Smith, he's a leading tackler in the NFL. And you, you listen to the press conference of his teammates talking about him. All they do is talk about his character, his leadership, the things he brought to the building, his infectious attitude. Like he's bringing that same mentality to an already established, you know, Baltimore Ravens, great culture. So he's going to add to that. So I, I, I'm just looking at just the, the guys who've moved and, and what they stand for. I think they're only going to enhance their team cultures. All right. So we got a couple teams, three and five, that we did not force to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, two of the best ever to play the game, right? Is it panic time for those teams? Um, it's more panic in Green Bay than it is in Tampa. It's just because, you know, they're, they're, Green Bay now, four, they're four games out of first place. I mean, it's a, it's an uphill trek to be able to catch the Minnesota Vikings at this point. Um, and, and then you look around and you, you look at Dallas and you, and you look at, um, you look at New York Giants, they're, there are multiple games in front of you in the NFC uh, wild card chase. So, I mean, like it's it's tough. You know, you're behind the eight ball. I still believe Tampa's going to win that division. They're the most talented by a landslide out of anybody there. They haven't played great defensively. They've Their offensive line has been decimated throughout the course of the year. Um, they still have the greatest player who ever played the game in, in Tom Brady. And I just believe that type of leadership, that type of ability, his resolve to, to be able to work through adversity that he's done, you know, throughout his career, I think that will pay dividends for him. And so I, I think Green Bay is in a lot more dire position than Tampa is. One thing that I've always been so impressed by you with is you're so eloquent with the media. And I think that's something that, you know, we're seeing this shift in this pivot of guys not always towing the company line or not always saying what it is, but you did such a good job of balancing all that. And I think it'd be really cool to hear, why is that? Why did you have training? Did you have effort? Is it how you're wired? I, what is it that makes you so unique? Because a lot of these guys that aren't happy, right? And I'm sure you weren't happy your entire career. It wasn't like everything went perfect for you, but you've always said and done the right thing. And even behind the scenes, I mean, that's also who you are. But can you, you know, peel back the layers a little bit and tell us why that is? Because I don't think people understand that until you get to see how you operate on a daily basis. Well, you know, I, I had the cheat code. I mean, you got you to gotta think, you know, my dad's been a journalist, sports journalist for 44 years in Minnesota. I was around him every day, you know, going to locker rooms with the Minnesota Twins, going to locker rooms with the Minnesota Vikings, going to locker rooms with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and being around some of the greatest and, you know, to be able to, to not only sit there and watch it, but to go back and listen to it and see the questions that my dad was asking and other journalists were asking, seeing how guys responded, their body language, the clothes they wore, how engaged they were with who they were talking to, like all of those things I was watching at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, never would I have dreamed I would have had the opportunity to play, you know, in the National Football League as I got older. But, you know, these are things that I still remember. I remember how, you know, the way you were able to convey your message and how it was, how it was interpreted, you know, has a lot to do with, you know, the team chemistry and how you're perceived as a leader. So, you know, those things are always, um, were always, you know, top of mind when I was engaged with the media. They're, they're not always, you know, have your best interests and, you know, sometimes it sells more papers and, and media clicks when they can cause division. So, you know, you have to be aware of who you're talking to, the people you can trust and the relationships that you develop. So all of those things are, are taken into account. Hey, so, so many people struggle when they when they leave the gridiron, right? And you, I think, better than most, started to plan for that towards the end of your career. You started diving into business. And you're obviously at the top of the world when it comes to business. And now you've jumped into the media side. Are you enjoying Monday Night Football? I know it takes some time away from your golf game, but are you enjoying it? I'm pickleball. Yeah. I can't wait to get you on the court, but you keep ducking me. Are you enjoying it, though? I am. I am. You know, I, there's a couple of things that I, I, mean, I have a strategic advantage because I played for 17 years. And so, you know, when you're 20 years old, all you're focused on when you get in the league or 21 or 22, whenever you guys got in, was just like, how do I make a career out of this? Like, how can I how can I play 10 years? How can I get to a second contract? How can I just make sure my family, 
my wife and my kids are taken care of, you know, um, and, you know, I went through that. I got to year 10, you know, year eight, and I'm thinking, you know, like I'm, I'm still playing, I'm still loving it, I'm still enjoying it. But then I also see a lot of guys who are transitioning out of the game and, and really having like serious issues, you know, because they didn't have, you know, things that they could really do once they were finished, you know. And so I really started to like, like ask myself, like, what, what do you want to be involved in? Like, what don't you want to be involved in? So I started doing interps every off season to kind of like, you know, if I want to get in real estate, then I should go intern at a, at a real estate fund. Or if I want to get into venture capital and I need to go intern at a venture capital fund. If I, if I want to, um, you know, do more in terms of my philanthropic endeavors with my foundation, I need to go learn from the American Cancer Society and, and see what, how they're doing it, how they're able to raise funds, you know, how are they able to go out every single year and raise $800 million dollars for cancer research. Now, I know obviously I can't do it at that level, but I know I can take a little bit of what their playbook is and, and, and put it in put it into what I'm doing. And so, you know, it really actually started for me in 2009 was kind of my first kind of foray into it. So I was at a New York Knicks basketball game and I randomly met a guy by the name of Frank Bizignano. And he's now the CEO of Fiserv. Um, he was a former CEO of First Data before they merged. But he was the COO at JP Morgan at the time. And he asked me to come do an internship at there and I went in and I did it and it really just kind of changed my mindset about not only the preservation of my own capital and making sure I'm I am a good uh steward of it but also trying to help other people make better and sound decisions and also investing in myself as much as you can invest in the companies and 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 you know public equities and the things that you do you have to make it a serious investment in yourself if you want to be able to do something that you can be proud of once you're done playing football um, so you have to make that investment while you're playing because once you get finished if you don't have something you know already kind of cooking you know people is like hey like you know i don't know if you bring any value anymore you're not playing anymore i can't you know get access to this and you know you can't get exposure to this and so you have to have those genuine relationships established well, plus you're an unbelievable photographer. I think that's one thing that really people don't know that, right? Like, I don't not, know. I don't know if I would say unbelievable. I would say more so. I'm, I'm passionate about it. I, I enjoy it. You know, going somewhere unique and being able to capture the moment, not for like Instagram photos, but something that I can be really proud of. I can look back and I have pictures in my house now that my my sons would be like, "Man, Dad, that was really cool. I want to I want to do that one time." So you're even able to pique the interest of, you know, of your children to, to go expand and get outside their, their comfort zone and travel the world and see different people and, and learn about different religions. You know, the more you get out and see the world, the more you see that we're very similar to, to people. It doesn't matter if you, you know, if you call your God Allah or you are, um, you know, you, you, you don't eat meat or you, you know, you, you choose to to be homosexual or like whatever the differences are when you travel, I think you see the more of the commonalities that we have as people. Like, I think as humans, you just want to be loved. You want to love somebody else. You want to be a part of community. Like, like there's, those are simple, simple things. It doesn't matter where you live, Russia, you know, Switzerland, like that's, those things are, are, are universally, you know, wanted and needed for, for people. So there's a lot of things you can do when you travel to be able to find those commonalities and, um, you know, to be able to capture those moments are really cool. That's a great message, man. We need more of that in this world, no doubt about it. We will wrap this up. Not only are you one of the greatest football players ever to walk this planet, you're one of the best teammates we for sure have had. And I think every single other teammate you ever had will echo that sentiment. Thank you for taking time away from the golf course and all your other <laughs> things you're doing joining us today and uh, we really appreciate it brother great great to be on with you q drew it's great to be with you as well man tell your wives i said hello and uh hope to see you guys sometime soon on the golf course on the pickleball court but whatever i'm doing i'm gonna take you out money because you know i, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love you thank all right. you all right all right you guys have a great day mm -hmm.